Hey, it's NPR's Book of the Day. I'm Andrew Limbaugh. Deshaun Charles Winslow's new book, Decent People, is a whodunit taking place in a segregated city in the 70s. In the Kirkus review for it, they write that the book kind of elevates the genre because of, quote, the author's humane and sensitive perceptions towards his characters, even those who may not deserve such equanimity. And here's Scott Simon ends up asking Winslow about that in this conversation, about giving despicable people a chance to be more than just a monster. And he frames that question by calling it a responsibility to give that to the characters. And Winslow kind of disputes that framing. And instead, he argues that it's really more of a closer reflection of reality, that most people aren't just one thing. We're going to return now to West Mills, North Carolina. That's the setting of Deshaun Charles Winslow's first novel called In West Mills. It won a passel of awards. Now, it's 1976, and Dr. Marion Harmon, the only black physician in town, has been found shot to death alongside her brother, Laz, and her sister, Marva, in their home. Many suspect Olympus Seymour, known as Limp, the half-brother who lived next door, but the white authorities in town don't seem much interested, and it falls to Joe Wright, who's just moved back, to ask some hard questions and look for the killer. Decent People is the title of this new novel. Deshaun Charles Winslow joins us now. Thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Joe has been in Harlem for decades and has become a fixture of life there. Yes. Working, living, having husbands. <laughs> what brings her back to West Mills? Retirement is sort of the primary reason. She decides that she wants to move back south. It was where she grew up. Well, part of her childhood was there, and she was snatched away abruptly for reasons that she doesn't learn until the end of the novel. Yeah. When she goes to purchase a home, she reunites with, with Limp, and she decides that she's going to go back home and marry him. So that's what takes her back. And, and why does community suspicion fall on Limp? in this murder? Because, well, he's their half-brother, but also there's a history of them never having gotten along or being close. And more immediately, he has really been angry with Marion. Um, he asked her for a loan, and not only did she decline, you know, she made fun of him needing the money and humiliated him. Yeah. And he was very vocal about that to some people in town. Well, tell us about about West Mills. And of course, I have to ask, you grew up in Elizabeth City, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Boy, you must get tired of being asked this, but is West Mills Elizabeth City? No, West Mills is based on a neighboring town called South Mills, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And that is where my mother was born and raised. Well, tell us about West Mills, the place that you've created. It's The novel set in 1976. It's a small town. And everyone truly knows everyone. It doesn't mean everyone communicates, but people know who you are, who your family is, how long your family has been around. They can spot a, an outsider right away. You know, they, mm -hmm. they know people's cars and faces they've never seen before. And it is a segregated town. You know, the canal, it's a color line. Mm -hmm. um, and people would largely stick to that that rule. And and what brings you back there for your novels? Well, part of it is logistics. Um, when I decided to write Decent People and I decided that I wanted to reuse the Lovings, uh, Eunice, Breezy, and their son, Leroy, mm -hmm. I was like, either I'm going to move them to someplace else, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. or I'm just going to stick with the same setting. Yeah, Leroy was tugged on my heartstrings. I, I found myself very moved by him. Yeah, yeah, he's fourteen year old queer kid, and he's he's tortured. And you know, well, I don't know that he's tortured so much that his his mother is, you know, but he is um, a little bit of a pariah. But you know, Leroy was actually happy. It, you know, it was when people start to want to change him that things start to go wrong. Yeah. Well, and he runs into people who think there's some kind of, uh, you know, oh, there must be some kind of treatment for, for this. Right, right. 
totally personal question, but I think you would agree that maybe your novels call out this question. Do you know what it's like to feel a little bit like Leroy? Oh, yeah, 100%. Probably not as in such a dramatic way. Fortunately, my parents never tried to have me fixed. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I'll take that back. I think my parents did in their own way try to have me changed. But I think it was not through any form of violence, or at least not physical violence. But I think I share a story with Leroy and a lot of my gay peers, people around my age range, I'm 43, where our parents do try to force us to do more masculine things around that age. But I was fortunate in that my parents sort of gave up in, in that way. <laughs> they realized that I just wasn't going to do it and they weren't going to spend the, use resources on it. Do you, do you feel, Mr. Winslow, as a novelist, that you have a responsibility at some point to give every character their chance to be understood? Yes. I'll say I don't know if it's a responsibility, but it's something that I choose to do. Because I could easily write a white man in the 70s in a town like this. I could easily make him a one-note monster. But I don't believe any human being is one-note. I don't know that it makes people all good, but I do think most human beings have something hidden away, <laughs> you know, that is kind. So I, I choose to try to show something good about every character, even if it's just one moment. Deshaun Charles Winslow's new novel is Decent People. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs>